Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Christmas Eve 2020. Um, gonna talk about uh, the Great Awakening, your awakening, um, the real meaning of Christmas, and how it is we find ourselves in this predicament of uh, being a human biological machine in a world surrounded by other biological machines. Uh, I'm going to draw from a couple sources. Uh, one of my favorite books, Life in the Labyrinth. And uh, I'm going to be uh, doing a spinoff with a chart um, from School for a Course in Miracles. So let's hear, let's get into these ideas. Uh, unknowingly, we voyage in a labyrinth. A macrodimensional maze of living electrical force cloaked by a thick layer of ordinary life. Our most serious obstacle is the uncontrollable urge to convert everything to the familiar, to reduce it all to the level of the primate brain, to reject the living, breathing reality of the totality of all possible attention. So our most serious obstacle, the uncontrollable urge to convert everything to the familiar. So you could say in a sense that we're seeing the sky through a straw. We're, we're only perceiving a limited amount of information. Uh, we, we think we're a person in a world, uh, but it's really a, a type of illusion. And uh, underneath all the layers of... Uh, underneath all the egoic layers of denial, there's our real self. Um, and you could say it, it doesn't resemble a body or a shape. It's an infinite mind. And you could say that you are actually the, the original self or first cause that started it all. And time and space is like an insane hotel where we've checked out and uh, we believe we've checked out of reality and we've checked into the insane hotel of time and space. And we believe that we are uh, a dream figure in our own mind's dream. So I'm going to read from this other book, The American Book of the Dead. Um, and I know a lot of people have curiosity, we all do, about... Um, birth and death and the in-between states. Um, and this particular part of the American Book of the Dead um, is talking about the in-between states. Um, it says, you feel betrayed. You were just getting used to having a biological machine and being surrounded by all that nice, warm planetary atmosphere. And now here you are, stripped bare and all exposed. Not just your biological machine, but everything you are or ever were is exposed. They know about you, everything about you, because there isn't anything that isn't you. It's all clear now. You're lying, cheating, betrayals. You can't maintain your lies in the face of this awful nakedness. You're cold, confused, and alone. No matter what you do, where you go, you keep coming back to this same eternal space. Because this space isn't where you are, it's who you are. There doesn't seem to be any escape, and there can't be an escape from yourself. No matter where you go, there you are. You're shivering and shaking. Boy, do you know what's going on, and you know what's going to happen. Absolutely nothing. Nothing is the absolute. So you become afraid, or realize that you are afraid. Oh, there are some moments when it was almost all right, but never as soothing as time, space, bodies, and relationships. You ought not to expect to be able to merge with something that you're afraid of. And in this case, it's the ultimate boogeyman, you. So what this all boils down to, and this could be talked about for hours, and there's so much material on this, is that all there is in reality is absolute oneness. That's who and what we are. And this entire thing, the time-space, the time-space dream, 
um, is, is, is how we're hiding. We're hiding in our own mind's dream. This is a hiding place. And we become terrified and afraid of what we really are. And you could say the world, your story of being a person is an actual defense against the truth. Um, the truth doesn't have anything to do with the pursuits of the biological machine of who we think we are as a person. All our ideas and fantasies about what reality is and what the world is have nothing to do with what reality is. This is like a complete fairy tale. This is a place south of heaven. Um, it's a place of illusion and deception where it's like we're playing a game. So... The real meaning of Christmas is remembering who you really are and who everyone else is. And that's what the whole, the true meaning of brotherly love is, is that the reason you be good to people is because they are you. Um, the world is all about fake kindness and fake forgiveness. Uh, it's all about giving to get. It's all about deception and illusion. Um, it's just like churches will go out and we're so Christ-like. We're helping the poor. Look at me, an upstanding Christian. I'm going to give to this poor, uh, this poor bum who won't take care of this poor unfortunate soul. We want to rescue him and bring him to heaven. This is part of the deception, uh, kindness to destroy or fake kindness. Rather than seeing that person as yourself, you see it, you see that person as a separate person and you see yourself as a separate individual. That's not real love. Real love, real brotherly love is where we actually see each other as ourself. I'm you, you're me. There's no difference. The bum on the street is just as much your relative as your own child. Um, but we don't see reality that way. Um, our ego mind is set up uh, in a sense that we're in complete denial, in other words, of, of who we are and what the truth is. All right. All right. So um, hopefully I can uh, share with you something here that you can take away from this. Um, some of this is kind of hard to understand. Uh, take from what you can, leave the rest. Uh, I'm going to try to make this as... Uh, Simple as possible. Um, so based on everything we've talked about, uh, we know we know only oneness. In reality, all there is is oneness. There's this absolute oneness. Some people would call it God. In reality, all there is is God. Um, also known as the I am. I am that I am. I am that I am. Uh, that's how oneness... Uh, is aware that it's oneness. Um, so it's as if there's a separate thought. Uh, in the Course in Miracles, we call it the tiny mad idea of separation. That's how this whole thing started. Uh, you could say this is another way of saying the knowledge of good and evil, eating off the tree. The mythological story of the fall from awareness is basically what this is. How we got from being a, an infinite void of oneness that has no separate parts to being in a dream world of being a, a person in a world. And uh, all, our, all our little problems and all the, the complications that have to do with being a body and all the illusionary laws that we seem to be under, um, that we seem to be a victim of, um, all of it is uh, designed to perpetuate this illusion um, that we are something that we're not. It's to shield us from knowing that we are the infinite, that we are the absolute. Everything here is designed to keep us asleep. Everything is designed to keep us asleep. So projected thought produces the illusion of time and space. So projected thought, and then there's the, the machine, the biological machine, the body, uh, you uh, within the projection. So it doesn't, it completely conceals the fact that we are the I am. Everything here conceals that fact. So it's like there's two reactions to this, this idea that we are separate from God or that we are separate from the I am. 
there's two reactions to it. There's uh, the ego, which is the fake self. The ego is also the, I talked about in other videos, one or the other, the idea that you can gain off another's loss, that separation's real, that I'm over here and you're over there, that, that differences are real. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit is the inner teacher, the guide, our real self. It is, it is the other choice. By default, we are set on the ego. Uh, being born into the world, we're programmed, uh, and with the, the physical body, reinforces the illusion, uh, the vulnerability of the physical body reinforces the illusion that we are separate, that we have indeed pulled off the impossible and we separated ourselves from God. But this whole thing is covered up in the story of being born as a body so it looks like the world was here before we got here and will be here after we, the special self, leaves. But in reality, there is no, there's no self, at least not the self that we think we are. Uh, that self doesn't exist. Uh, it's a figment of imagination. Um, birth certificates, names, all of it is, it's all made up. Um, so the other choice uh, is the spirit. Um, the spirit... Uh, is uh, it frees our mind from uh, the idea that we are uh, separate from each other. Um, it's transformational forgiveness. Because you could say before, before real work and trans, before real wor work and awakening begin, we first have to go through the, the period where we remember uh, brotherly love, transformational forgiveness. That's kind of like, um, until we get that, uh, we, we, we can't really awaken from the dream. Um, that's one of the most important parts is seeing other people as yourself. That's, and realizing that the game you play and all your thoughts and beliefs about the world are actually, uh, uh, they're actually false. Um, everything here, uh, religion, education, it's all based on this idea, this ego idea that uh, we are something that we're not. Um, it's, the whole world is a system of denial. That couldn't be stressed more. Um, so choosing the spirit is the key, and it all starts with uh, every time we find ourselves in a judgment thought, Every time we find ourselves entertaining the idea of being a victim or a victimizer, um, unjustness, anytime we entertain the idea of being unfairly treated uh, in the workplace, family, friends, um, it happens every day. You know, driving in traffic, somebody cut in front of us. Um, we just realize that uh, the game we're playing, you know, we realize. Uh, um, we realize who we are and who everyone else is, and that uh, this is a, a fake dream world, basically. And the purpose is to wake up, remember who you are, and then it's Christmas. You know, that's, that's the true meaning of Christmas. You wake up, remember who you are, you remember who, el who everybody else is, and uh, that's the Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit within you. That's the truth that sets you free. Um, you can complicate it all you want, um, but really it's, it's the basic simple truth. I'm you and you're me. And uh, yeah, this is, this is Christmas, ladies and gentlemen, 2020. Welcome to the Great Awakening. Where we go from here is going to be very interesting. Um, we live in a complete... Uh, Complete dream world where we see biological machines. Uh, um, they're walking around on autopilot. They completely don't know who they are. And we have to play. Uh, uh, we can't. Uh, we have to act for now. In some ways, we have to act. But we the real goal, the real purpose. Uh, Christmas is every day. And. The real purpose is to, uh, to, to wake up in the dream. Um, it does go much deeper than that. There is a... Uh, got cut off there. ran out of video. My video recorder shut off. Um, but I'm going to close it up with that. Um, 
Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, that's pretty impressive. Um, remember, if you like the content, remember to subscribe and hit that bell and you'll get notified when I make new videos. And uh, I will look forward to seeing you on future videos. Thanks again. Enjoy.